Okay, the homework. So we're going to go through a good chunk of these together. Um, this is going to be page uh, 98 in your notebook. And pretty much uh, I would keep this page out because you want your diff different formulas, this and this and this. And we're going to go through a couple together. And then when I see you guys on Tuesday, um, because of that weird ACT schedule, um, we'll take some time on Tuesday to work on this. All right? Okay, so first what's going to happen is let's just go through and take a look at some of these problems, just like from the notes. Let's look at these. So you just have to understand how do you combine the exponents. So when you're multiplying with the same base, you're just going to add the exponents. And I don't need to know what e to the second power is. We're just going to leave e as e. Um, this, again, if you remember, this 4 just distributes to this exponent. So 4 times 7x is 28x. And then this distributes to 5's exponent, so 5 to the 4th. And then, well, I don't want to know what this is. I do want you to go to your calculator and figure out what 5 to the 4th power is. So the answer I'm really looking for on this one is going to be 625 with e to the 28x power. All right, number nine, you're going to have problems like this to fix from the Chapter 5 test. So remember, there's a little two there. And normally, I would say, let's make a factor tree. But it's small enough. We know that the square root of 9 is 3. And then for this stuff and the exponents, we would use division. So 2 times what gives us 6x? Or how many times does 2 go into 6x? That's going to be 3x. And that's all you have to do on 9. So on 11, 11 is going to be like 4 in the fact that we want to add these exponents. We want to add x or 1x with negative 6x with 8. And if the problem were just like this, as my fourth hour said, well, that's just negative 5x plus 8. And that's all your exponent is going to be, negative 5x plus 8, because these are not like terms. You can't add them. Um, 13 and 14, there are mistakes. And so the idea is describe the error over here and correct it. Where we're going to spend most of our time, I guess, or do the most examples together is right here. So what I'm going to suggest you do is we're going to number these. So here's 15, 16, 17, 18. Uh, make some rows. And let's, let's try some of these. All right. So the idea is, again, that these problems are stemming from y equals b times g to the x. So you're going to have to tell me b, g, and r, and is it growth or decay? So the thing is, g is attached to a plain x exponent, no numbers. And when you look at 18, we're going to work backwards. Um, right now, if I asked you guys, hopefully you would realize that, you know, what's b? Well, b is 3. But when I ask you what g is, it's not e, because g has to have an exponent of x, and this has an exponent of 2x. So what you're going to do is use your calculator and realize that e to the second is really g, because I can take e to the second power on my calculator, second ln, and this is really 7.4, okay? So even though it looks like g is e, e it's really e to the second. So g is going to be 7.4, OK? We're going to come back to r in just a moment. Let's take a look at 17. So on 17, b is 2. And again, it looks like g is just the e, but it's really e to a negative first power. So you need to go to your calculator, second ln, put negative first, and realize that g is, we're going to go two decimal places, 0.37. All right, 16. So I don't see a B here. So what number can you multiply that doesn't change it? So the answers I get are 1 or 0. If you make B become 0, then when you multiply this by 0, it's gone. So B is actually going to be 1. And then G is not E. It's what E to the negative second is. So second LN. And we're going to use 0.14. All right, and then 15. So 15 kind of has the same situation as far as b is. It's 1. And then g is really whatever e to the third is, OK? So e to the third, second ln. And we're going to use 20.1. OK? 
So just to reminder, this is the way we would normally have seen the problem before E was ever introduced. X is just a plain exponent. For 17, we wouldn't have seen the problem like this. We would have seen it like this two times, and we ended up saying uh, 0.37 to the x power. So that's all we're doing is getting it into this format. Um, is it growth or decay? We're going to do R last. Well, when it's bigger than 1, it's growth. When it's less than 1, it's decay. Less than 1, bigger than 1. So the problem everyone's still having is how do you get R? So R comes from G, and you know G, and with 1, you're either adding R or subtracting R to get what G is. So for instance, if I know that G is 0.14, let's think 14 cents, then if I have a dollar, am I adding an R to get 14 cents or subtracting? So most people realize they're subtracting. With their calculator, they realize that they're subtracting 86 cents. And that's what R is as a decimal, and we want R as a percent. So here, G is 0.37. So again, with 1, they subtract an amount. So what did they subtract? They subtracted 63 cents. And that's the decimal, so here's the percent. This is what R is. So on this one, G is 7.4. So with 1, they definitely added to it. So if you think of this as $7.40, the R that they added was $6.40, and that as a percent is 640%, okay? To go from a decimal to a percent, take your decimal and just multiply it by 100. This times 100 is this, this times 100 is this, this times 100 is this. All right, so you're going to finish the other four. Um, just some other questions to quickly talk about. Um, this is a lot like the mile marker where you had to do matching. Again, just realize that in this problem, B is 1, and that G is not really E. It's E to the second, which is going to be, and again, we've already done that number, uh, 7.4. Okay? But hopefully you can see, you know, where the y-intercept narrow some down, is it growth or decay, and narrow some down. Um, otherwise, just pay attention when you get to the word problems, compounded continuously, compounded quarterly. Uh, we did in the other class just say 6% is 0 0.06 as a decimal, 4% um, you'll use 0 0.04 as a decimal. Uh, let's see, on this one, 6%. That's 0.06. And then this 3% is 0.03. So get through these. When I see you guys on Tuesday, we'll have another 10 minutes. So maybe by now you probably have somewhere around 20 to 30 minutes. Work on this. You're more than welcome to work with a partner. And then when I see you on Tuesday, we'll spend another 10 minutes, and then we're going to check it. Um, this is our third assignment. After three assignments, we're going to have our first homework quiz. So this, that's on page 98, and then the stuff that's on, I believe it's page 90, I think it's 94, 95, I think it's 95, um, there are two assignments. Those are all fair game for the homework quiz. So make sure you can locate those and that you have them for um, Tuesday, because we will have our first homework quiz on Tuesday. All right? And that's it. I hope you guys have a great weekend.